Hi, this is Richard from Mountain Electronics. Today I would like to go over the user interface and a few tips and tricks for the Noctagon M43 Meteor flashlight. This flashlight is one of the highest performance flashlights on the market today. It has 12 Nichia or Cree LEDs. Um, it can go all the way from about 1 lumen up to 7,000 plus out the front lumens depending on uh, the LEDs chosen. It has tons of efficiency and tons of customizability and really it's the most power and the most versatility that you can get in a package this small. But when I first saw this light and I got it and I looked at the user manual um, I was a little overwhelmed. It's a very advanced and powerful flashlight but really uh, after using it a little bit I found that the user interface can be quite simple after you understand it. So the goal of this video is to show you how simple it really is. The first element of the user interface I would like to address is the system of clicks and holds. A lot of the user interface elements are accessed using a system of clicks and holds. So for example, to enter into the minimalist user interface, the manual will say nine clicks and hold. Now, when I first saw this, I was a little bit confused because I would click it nine times and then hold on the, the ninth click. But what it really means is to click it nine times and then click once more and hold that click. So for example, if the user manual says nine clicks and hold, you'll click it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then hold. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but usually on this light, um, when you enter in a command of some sort, it gives you some sort of feedback, either on the button or on the LEDs themselves. So I'll do that once again, and you'll watch, and you can see the LEDs blink back to acknowledge that there was a command accepted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then hold. On functions that can be enabled or disabled, the light will either blink once for disabled or twice for enabled. For example, to turn on or off the front indicator beacon light, you would click it three times and then hold. And right now you can see it's on. So one, two, three, and then hold. The light blinked once. Now we're going to do it again to turn it back on. One, two, three, and hold. The light blinked twice to show that it's now enabled. Now that you know how the clicks and hold function works, here are a few common uses. Now the first one I'd like to address, and it's, it's the most commonly asked question, is the lockout function. Now the Meteor has two ways to lock it out so it doesn't accidentally turn on uh, you know, in your pocket or in your holster in the bag or, or whatever. And the first would be a mechanical lockout. In that case, you can simply unscrew the head about a turn, half a turn to a turn, and it will mechanically lock out the electrical connection to the batteries. But there's also an electronic lockout. If you click the switch six times, one, two, three, four, five, six, the light will blink red on the indicator light, and now the light is locked out. I've received a lot of emails from people thinking that their light was broken because it didn't, it didn't do anything when they went to click the button. Um, but all you have to do to unlock it now is to click it six more times. One, two, three, four, five, six. The light blinked twice, the button turned green, and the light is now re-enabled. Now that you understand the system of clicks and holds, I'd like to show you a few of the things that people commonly like to change on their flashlight. The first of which is the function of uh, the switch indicator light. You can see that right now the beacon function is turned on. This means the light will blink every few seconds uh, to show the location of the light but also the state of the battery charge. A blue light means a fully charged battery. The battery will then change to green and to red as it is depleted. Now if you wanted to enable or disable this function you do two clicks and then hold. So right now it's turned on, so we're going to give it two clicks and hold. One, two, and hold. Now 
that function is disabled. We have no lights on at all while the light is turned off. The next function that this front indicator light can have is a steady state light where a very low, very dim light will continuously be on. And to turn that on or off, you do three clicks and hold. Now that light is on. You may not be able to see it on the camera. I can see it, but it's very dim, so you're not going to see it very much unless it's uh, in very dim light. You can also have both of the functions enabled at the same time. And so if I wanted to add the beacon to the steady state, again, I would give two clicks and hold. So now we have both the steady state and the beacon. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about are the three main user interfaces on the Meteor. The first one is called Minimalist. Now this is probably the most simple and the one that I usually ship the light with. Now how you enter into that user interface, if you weren't in it or if you wanted to get back to it, is to give nine clicks and then hold. So we're going to enter into that user interface right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and hold. So now we are in the minimalist user interface. Now from this, from off in this user interface, there are three main functions. The first is going to be the lower of the two main mode groups. And so you turn that on by just clicking the button once. Now the light is on that lower mode group. Now within each of the two mode groups, while you're turned on in there, a double click will increase the light level or decrease it between the two levels in that mode group. So to turn off the light now, we're going to push the button one more time. Turn it back on to that same one, we're going to click it again. Now to enter the second mode group, while the light is turned off, we click the button twice. Now we're in the higher of the two mode groups. If we want to change levels within that mode group again, while it's on, we double click. It just went higher, double click, and it went lower. Now from either when the light is turned off or when it's turned on, if you hold down the button, it enables the turbo mode, which is the highest and most powerful mode on the flashlight. When you let go, it'll stay on if you've had the button press for a few seconds. If you press just momentarily, it ramps up and then turns back off. It's the same thing from when the light is turned off. If you hold the button down, it'll go straight to turbo. And then if you only hold it for a few seconds, when you let go, it'll turn back off. The next user interface is called the Cycle and Fast Access user interface. Now this is probably the second most popular user interface and the one that I think I like maybe the best after using the light for a little while. Now to enter this user interface you give 10 clicks and then hold. And then the light will blink twice to show that it's entered into the second user interface. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and then hold two blinks and now we're into this user interface. Now this user interface is similar uh, to the first user interface, the minimalist user interface, uh, in that to access turbo you hold down the button. Except for in this user interface instead of having to hold the button down for a few seconds to make it stay on, it automatically stays on when you hold when you click it on. Now from off, we've seen that a long press gets us into turbo, but there are also two other, one other main function of this uh, user interface, and that is the cycling. So when you click the light, it turns on on a low level. Then as you hold the button, the power ramps up and then back down. And so you can choose the level of brightness that you want so you hold the button when it gets to the level that you want, you let go of the button. And then to turn off the light, you simply push, click the button one time. Now the third user interface is called the advanced user interface. And rightly so. It's the most customizable, but also it took me a little while to figure out how to use this. And now that I think I've got it figured out, um, let me show you how to get into it and then also how to use it a little bit. So to get into this user interface we're going to give 11 clicks and then hold and then the light will blink three times to confirm 
that it's entered into the advanced user interface. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and hold. There we go, three blinks. Now, once you're into this user interface, um, there are basically, we're going to call them three modes uh, with memory. So basically, you can set whatever level you want for any of these three modes, and then the light will remember it the next time you go into it. And there's a mechanic that is that was the hardest part for me to figure out, um, but it's similar to all the modes, and that's how you set the level of that mode once you enter into it. And so to enter into the first mode, you're going to enter into it by giving the light just one click. Now, I have this one set to a pretty low level. One click again turns off the light. And then once you're in that mode, if you hold down the button, you get turbo, which is obviously the, the brightest level. But now here's the key to all this. Here's the trick to the advanced mode. To set the mode level once you enter into that, once you uh, first turn on that mode, here's how you do it. You click the light and turn it on. And right after you click it on and turn it on, you click and hold the light will then begin to ramp. So right now the brightness is increasing. Then if I let go, it will start decreasing. And when I find the level I want, I let go. And then I click the button, and now it will come back on to that mode the next time I go to use it. Now, to set the mode levels is the same on the other three modes. But here's how you access them. Remember, so the first one, we just click the light once to turn it on. To enter into the second mode, you click and hold, and that will enter into the second mode. Now to enter into the third mode, you just do two fast clicks from off. Now we've entered into the third mode. And then again, a long press brings you to turbo. That one we were already pretty much there. And then a short click turns it back off. And then from off also, a long press will give you turbo. Now I hope that you found uh, some of these uh, tips and tricks to be useful. Um, I really enjoy this flashlight. You know, it's it's probably the first you know 6,000 plus lumen light that is small enough to actually fit in most jacket pockets. Um, it's one of the first lights I've ever seen that can run for you know hundreds of hours on the lower levels and still give you you know tons of light output on the higher levels. The fit and finish are awesome. I mean, this is a light that I really enjoy. It's a light that's been very popular. And I just wanted to show everybody um, a little bit about how powerful and how customizable the user interface is. Now, there's a lot more functionality built into this light. Um, we ship a user manual to this light with every light that we sell. And there's also a copy available online. And there's lots of other functions such as, you know, tactical flashing and strobes and beacons and uh, battery flash readouts for more precise battery levels and lots of other functions that are built into this light that I'm not going to go over uh, on in this video. But now that you understand how the basic user interface works, um, when you get your light and you get the manual, you'll be able to look at it and play with it and learn a little bit more as you go. But you don't have to get into that stuff if you don't want to. You know, it's built into it, but you don't need to use it if you don't want to. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope the information was useful for you. And if you have any questions, you can uh, post them in the comments section below. Uh, to pick up one of these lights, there's two places. You know, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, um, you can purchase them direct from Mountain Electronics at MTN, that's short for Mountain, MTNElectronics.com. Um, if you're other places in the world, you can order from us, but also you can order direct from International Outdoors, and that's intl-outdoors.com. Uh, either one of us will give you great service, and uh, you'll get a great light. Thanks.